Good morning, hoping that you still have enough energy, as you're about to learn, and I'm about to discuss the Chapter 27, SMEs, Small Medium Enterprises Assets, specifically property planning equipment, government grant, borrowing costs, intangible assets, and impairment of asset. First step, property planning equipment. PFRS for SMEs do define property planning equipment as a tangible asset that can be touched, some of which can be heard, or even sometimes can be tasted. I could already imagine what the taste of that iron is. <laughs> Nasty. To conclude, assets that has a physical structure. These property plan equipment are held for the purpose of usage in the production, used to supply some goods, used to render services, or for some instances it is used for income purposes, which is rental. And this tangible asset has expected usage of more than one period or more than a year to be specific. This property plan equipment, a tangible asset, is initially measured at cost. The cost comprises of the following purchase price, which is includes legal and brokerage fees, import duties and non refundable purchase taxes. Any directly attributable cost to bringing the asset to the location and condition necessary for it to be capable of operating in a manner intended by the management. Initial measurement of dismantling and restoration costs, which the entity has a present obligation. The subsequent measurement of property planning equipment under the PFRS for SME is either cost model or evaluation model. The choice is vested to the entity who owned the property planning equipment. Revaluation mod method is a measuring assets at its fair value on revaluation date less subsequent accumulated depreciation. There is no difference between the full PFRS and PFRS for SME as for the property plans equipment measurement, depreciation method, useful life, residual value, depreciation of significant components, impairment, and their recognition. Now let's proceed to the journey. Next step, government grant. A question is raised. What is government grant? It is an assistance or a help from the government by transferring some government resources to an entity in exchange for a past or future compliance with specific condition relating to the entity's operation activities. Now, how and when do we recognize a government grant? Is government grant an income or a liability? A government grant does not impose a condition of specific future performance on the recipient entity is recognized income when such grant proceeds are receivable. A grant that has imposed specified future performance condition on the recipient entity is recognized income when the conditions are fully performed and a government grant already received but the conditions are not yet fully performed is recognized as liability. Government grant is measured at fair value of the asset received or to be received. The difference between the pool PFRS and the PFRS for SMEs under the government grant is as follows. Pool PFRS government grant is recognized as an income when there is a reasonable assurance that the recipient entity will comply to, to specified condition. And under PFRS for SMEs, government grant is recognized as an income when the condition is actually satisfied. Pool PFRS or as applied the matching principle, this income from the government grant is recognized over the period necessary to match the expense or cost of such grant. And as for the PFRS for SME, it does not apply the matching principle. Full PFRS grant related to asset is treated as either deferred income or reduction to the cost of the asset provided by the entity. And under the PFRS for SMEs, the grant is recognized as deferred income when the conditions are actually satisfied. Now let's proceed to the borrowing cost. Borrowing cost is a group of costs that is incurred for borrowing fans. The very famous among these costs is the interest expense. Being specific, borrowing costs include 
the interest expense calculated using the effective interest method, finance charges in respect of finance lease recognized, exchange differences arising from currency borrowing to the extent that they are regarded as an adjustment to the interest cost. Okay, now let's talk about the difference between the recognition of borrowing costs from PFRS for SMEs to full PFRS perspective. PFRS for SME, all borrowing costs are recognized and expense of the period when cost is incurred, even if it is directly attributable to the acquisition. And please do remember that in PFRS for SMEs under borrowing costs, there is no capitalization of interest. Under the full PFRS borrowing costs that are directly attributable to the acquisition, construction, or production of a qualifying asset, shall be capitalized as a part of cost of assets. And as for not directly attributable costs to the qualifying asset, it shall be expense. When incurred, the PFRS for SME requires disclosure of the following. Finance costs, total interest expense using the effective interest method for financial liabilities that are not measured at fair value through profit or loss. Now let's proceed to the intangible asset. BFRS for SMEs defines intangible asset as an identifiable non-monetary asset without physical substance. So when do an intangible asset become identifiable? It is become identifiable when it is separable and such intangible asset arises from contractual or other legal rights. Under the PFRS for SMEs, intangible asset is recognized when it is probable that there is expected future economic benefit arising from the asset that will flow to the entity. Cost or the value of such asset is can be measured reliably, and the asset does not result from expenditure incurred internally on an intangible item. The initial measurement for such asset, the PFRS for SME measures intangible assets initially at cost and the cost of separately acquired intangible asset that comprises of the following, the purchase price, import duties and non-refundable purchase taxes after deducting the trade discounts and rebates, and indirectly attributable cost of preparing the asset for its intended use. The subsequent measurement to the intangible asset. In subsequent measurement, we do recognize that intangible asset is amortized and impaired, thus the subsequent measurement is at cost, less accumulated amortization and impairment loss. And do take note that PFRS for SME do only use cost model in dealing with intangible asset. Now let's talk about the difference of PFRS for SME and the full PFRS. PFRS for SME, all research and development costs are expensemen incurred. For full PFRS, research costs are expensed when incurred, but the development costs may be capitalized when specific ideas are met. For example, if such development adds to the value of the intangible asset. The PFRS for SME measured intangible asset at cost model, while for the poor PFRS, it's either cost model or evaluation model. The PFRS for SME, the useful life of intangible asset is finite. If the useful life cannot establish reliably, the management can measure long, as long as it will not exceed 10 years. For full PFRS, it's either finite or indefinite. PFRS for SME, all intangible assets are amortized and tested for impairment if there is an indication that it may be impaired. Full PFRS, finite intangible assets are amortized and tested for impairment while the indefinite are not amortized but are tested for impairment. General principle for impairment, if the recoverable amount is less than the asset carrying amount, then it should be impaired. The impairment is the reduction of the carrying amount in order to have that equal value to the recoverable amount. But if an item of property planning equipment is mesh measured using the revaluation model, any impairment loss is charged to the revaluation surplus. And as for the excess, it is recognized in the profit or loss. What is a recoverable amount? 
It is the higher between the fair value less cost of disposal and the value in use. It is not all time necessary to define both. If only one is available, then do you so. And if either of this amount is greater than the carrying amount, then there is no impairment. What is the fair value? Fair value is the price of intangible asset in the market. What is the value in use? Value in use is the present value of future cash flow or the value of the money if I have it now. Four PFRS and PFRS for SME are the same with recognition and measurement recognition and measurement of impairment loss. Definition of fair value less cost of disposal and value in use. Internal and external indicators of impairment. Reversal of impairment. The different lies on the impairment of asset. PFRS PFRS for SMEs asset included goodwill are tested for impairment when there is an indication that asset may be impaired. On the other hand, full PFRS assets with finite useful life are tested for impairment when there is an indication to do so. But the following are tested for impairment annually when there is an indication that such asset will be impaired. The goodwill, intangible asset with indefinite useful life or not yet available for use. And that concludes the chapter 27, the P, the small medium enterprises asset specifically the property plan and equipment government grant borrowing costs intangible asset and impairment of asset thank you